Hey, and we're back. We're Welcome back to <laughs> the cavalry. cavalry. We always start our show like we just came back from break. I don't know when that started when we when I when we started saying we're back, but that's that's how that's how we start. Yeah, I think um, I think we've always done it, but we just pointed it out the last couple of weeks. We're self-aware now. Uh, <laughs> we're self-aware of all of our uh, ticks. And we are we are joined by wonderful guests. We've got Tom Clark, and they're both very shy. And Steph Clark, if you're watching the YouTube, you can see how shy they are. So bashful. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Cavalry, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I, you know, I, for years I thought ca Cavalry was spelled like Calvary, like C-A-L-V-A-R-Y. So this, I learned something from this podcast. All it's of our guests have learned that as well. <laughs> when they yeah. spell it, yeah. yes. and all of our missed, all of our missed listenership that goes yeah. to the Calvary, it's, it's amazing. I don't know. I guess it's just because you just those two words it, it, or letters. It's easy to switch those. But when yeah. I when we talked about the name, you know, it was because we. I don't know Johnny when we talked about it, but it was like the idea was like you're calling in backups. You're calling yeah. in the cavalry. You know. It made so no. much sense. Not one time did I think, oh, this what this will get confusing with the Calvary. And it's come up every week. And know, it has every episode. To be killing us. Right. What's the other Because I can't spell, so I don't. I don't even. Well, I know being Catholic, oh. Calvary was like. Yeah. Right. It's a religious. Um, yeah. Like uh, the hill or. Uh, Not where he cares. I yeah. should know more, but. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly. like uh, it's like for all intents and purposes. And you're like, why are people intense? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, an intensive purpose. Like right. a really, <laughs> yeah. really hard course of purpose. Uh, but yeah, so the name is a disaster. But you know how you're like pot committed? It's just too late. I don't know. We have too many, we have yeah. too, we're too much invested in it now. I do so think I it's interesting it. that we never, like not once did it come up until after we had, you know, the logo designed. Right. Which we have <laughs> since ditched. And, uh, you know, had a couple episodes under our belt. Yeah. We probably we probably could uh, switch the name, I suppose. But, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. now it's too fun. It's too fun hearing people butcher it. Yeah. Do you think people knew how to spell Mark Marin's name? Come on, guys. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, I never point. thought of that, actually. Yeah. If people would screw up WTF all the time, they would oh, get yeah. confused. Yeah. Like right. they thought WT, the trade organization? What is Right. Well, Chelsea Handler, everyone thought, what did they think her name? Chelsea Lately, they thought her last name was Lately. For right. And that, it didn't work out for her very well. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the books. All these people have gone into anonymity. Gigantic fame. Yeah. Yeah. See, you're in... Uh... Andrew, you're in Portland or Seattle? Portland, yeah. Uh, Heidi and I uh, moved to Portland almost two years ago now, which is crazy wow. to think about. But this whole pandemic year, it's like hardly even counts. But uh, no. yeah, so time flies. But yeah, we we love it up here. It's great. And you're you're you guys are in L.A. right? Yeah. yeah. LA? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Johnny and I, everybody we talked to, like lived in L.A. and then they and then they live somewhere else. And then uh, you guys are still there, which is so that's a different perspective for us. Well, I, Steph, I'm, where are you originally from? Because I'm from around here in L.A., nearby, like the suburbs. So I think when you're used to just paying way too much, then you're just like, <laughs> OK, this is yeah. all for forever. Right. Well, she talks about wanting to move to Wisconsin, but I'm like, you haven't experienced a Wisconsin winter and in May or something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! This last this last winter, did you did you come to Wisconsin at all? No, I didn't. Uh, maybe in February I was in Chicago, but yeah. It was because it was like I mean it was like a white it was like a Norman Rockwell white Christmas where it wasn't like all slushy and crappy until like the last two days. It was like thick, like high, just like I mean it was kind of nice because you know we're in pandemics, so we're not going anywhere, so it's just like oh it's cool to look out the window and see everything's white. But, uh, that sounds racist, John. I know you're gonna get us canceled. <laughs> leave oh, that talk. Worse. Leave that for the Calvary. Right. <laughs> That's Calvary talk, not on the Cavalry. Yeah. 
Although this, uh, uh, well, so you guys are uh, still in LA. Has it? How has it been pandemic life in Los Angeles or greater Los Angeles? Yeah, we're out in the suburbs, so it's nice and spaced out. So that's like we have you know room to like go on nice walks and not see anybody. <laughs> or if we do, we just cross the street. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't. I've got. We've gotten used to just kind of not doing anything or just going to the park and that's like our whole day right <laughs> yeah it is it's nice when you don't have to dodge people it's amazing because in portland people are very pandemic conscious of course and you see somebody like 75 yards away and it's all you like crisscross the street for each other like six times before you someone commits to the right side of the, you know what i mean right. and then I, I was in arizona last week Man. people just don't do they just don't do it they don't give a shit so they're, like, <laughs> they're coming right at you and you're like, oh, this guy's playing chicken with me. What is, is he really going to do this? Is he really going to walk by me? Right. <laughs> you know? And no. I do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's going to swallow me or that's something. Why you, that's when you start acting like you have a sneeze coming. <gasps> I know. To really raise the stakes. But I don't uh, think it would even bother them. I think in Arizona, they just, they all had it. So they're like, yeah, <laughs> you can't, you can't scare us. Before the pandemic, uh, I performed at this uh, country club. Like this was the last show before everything shut down, and it was at this country club, and they served crab in like this trough, like <laughs> and, and just people. Yeah. Just, we were just watching people just grab no no yeah. no you know utensils just grabbing it. And in the middle of my show, I was I noticed like a whole row of guys drinking Corona. I was like, oh, that's appropriate. You guys drinking Corona? And they're like Corona, and I'm like. We're not going to make it. Like, this is the last <laughs> show. This is not And good. then that area up in Northern California got hit hard. <laughs> and it was yeah. definitely that, that type country of, club. That, yeah. That, <laughs> that is, like, funny. It's, like, I was trying to think of today, like, what's the last thing that will come back? The absolute last. So, like, because, like, I was, like, even once we all get vaccinated, you know, basically life will be normal. But then it's like, I still won't just be like shaking hands the same way yeah. right away because you don't know other people's level of comfort or whatever. But I, crab legs in a trough, <laughs> community yeah. crab legs could be close to just the last thing that com makes it back. I don't know. Or it's like a, a female comic, guys are, you know, creepy dudes are like, where's my hug? It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no more creepy, where's my hugs? Maybe that's the last thing. That's when we know we're back. Is when the first male comedian harasses a female comedian. That, right, right. that hero creepy guy is like, give me a hug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tom, Tom and Andrew, when, how long before you guys will start docking after the pandemic's over? <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware of that as a sexual term, but then just your face. Johnny <laughs> went for the like, where is it? Where's my? And I was like, okay, he's talking about something weird. What is what is docking exactly? You got to explain it to me. Well, that's docking is when two men, homosexual or heterosexual, uh, stand stand belly, no judgment, stand belly belly to belly, and they put their wiener heads together, and then one of them like un like one of them has to be uncircumcised, and he unrolls it over the other one. Unrolls it. <laughs> I would have never gotten that. Yeah, unrolls it. So, uh, so, anyways, back to my question. Oh well, uh, that will come before the crab legs. I think I'll do that before. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta find a nice uncircumcised fella first. Oh, I am uncircum. Or I know. See, I'm circumcised. Yeah, yeah. So it won't work. I'm circumcised. I, I forgot. Oh, you got excited for a second. For a second there, I, know. But... I know. I know. And he doesn't know which one. I'm circumcised. Yeah. I'm circumcised. It'd be awkward if Andrew and I got together and tried to dock, and it's like, oh, well, let's make, yeah, let's make sure. No. Uh, I thought you said, oh, no, I thought you said, oh, well, now. Oh, we're this is so awkward. Awkward. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> let's go uh, eat some crab legs in a trough. Here we let's go trough it up. Yes. Man, uh, our, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's, uh, but yeah. So I, I I was just thinking though, like, what's the last thing that's gonna come back? I'm I I feel like buffets are the worst. Yeah. Um, have you been I to even a casino or anything? Have you seen what they're doing there? Yeah, or? I went to a casino and right in the middle of pandemic for like 
it, it was the saddest show too because I mean they were they were doing a good job of keeping it safe, but then right. it was also like the people who came. You know, you're like, this is what we're all risking it for. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't care, yeah. and they not you know. Uh, but they didn't have any buffets going or anything like that. They didn't do anything crazy. So I haven't seen anybody try it. It's just funny. Like all the things that we look for in a comedy show, people close together, uh, right. close to stage, like all that stuff. It's like, yeah, don't do any of that. If you want to get food. So, right. The safer right. they are, the worse the show. Right. So there's a weird thing where you want it to be safe, but then you're like, this is really safe. <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> safely bomb. Right. <laughs> yeah. My career is a little more important than a pandemic. So, yeah. so <laughs> well, they get these say people... laughter is the best medicine. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. Let's, let's put it to the test. That's right. That, that okay. doctor has been run out of medicine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I, have you done any shows? Have you like has your pandemic had any shows in it? We did a few shows in the fall. We did some, uh, I ran some um, shows out in the suburbs out here in LA, but it was outside. Um, it was right. coupled up, social distance and all that. And it felt really safe. I changed the mics. I brought sanitizer and, uh, you know, I felt good about it. And then we did other people's shows and I didn't feel good about that because right. their safety right. is not my safety. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you just you see, see the slow deterioration as the show goes on. Of like, we I did a backyard <laughs> show, and it's like they have yeah. hand sanitizer on the table, but yet no one's wearing a mask. People are drinking; they're drinking, getting their glasses mixed up. It's, it's yeah, yeah it just falls yeah, apart. That is the thing. Like, even if they start out with like good intentions, as the night goes on, it, yeah, I could see it getting lazier, lazier. Like. Like, oh, we'll switch out the microphone each time or we'll put a cover on the right. mic and then take the cover out. And then by the end of the night, they're like, yeah, oh, fuck it. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's all right. It's good. I don't have it. <laughs> yeah, no one's gotten it yet, right? Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, this is not, uh, it, it was not, we were not made for this. It just the, the interaction. And people still want to shake your hand after the show. I don't know if when you were in Arizona, if you. No, her. I hid. I told him. I told him. I was like, I put cards out on the table first when no one was in there. And then I, I told him, like, I was like, hey, you know, if you want to check out stuff, just take the card. I'm not going to. And then they were like, they couldn't believe it. They're like, oh, you're not going to hang out after the show. You're not going to come see us. I was like, no, you maniacs. I'm not going to go. <laughs> slap hands with you what are you insane but they they just don't want to knock what's wrong with this guy <laughs> yeah what a cool. nerd <laughs> thinks he's too good for us yeah yeah right. i think i'm doing uh we're doing a stir crazy i think that's where you were yeah uh, exactly in april so that'll be our first time indoors yeah since. yeah i mean it's shocking at first and then you just kind of go all right you know i just would stay out and stay in the green room and I just go in and do the show and leave mm -hmm. but it, it is a weird it's weird it's like doing it the first time inside with a bunch of people and you're looking around and nobody that's the thing i just couldn't believe like nobody thought it was because i would do bits too at the beginning about just a few like covid things like three or four and then and then uh and i noticed it's like they weren't hitting as hard and i was like oh yeah because these it doesn't they, they don't, don't give a shit. They're not uh, worried about it. <laughs> they haven't been thinking about it this whole time, you know? Well, that was like my that was like my first show when I did that show in Port Washington that my son came to. I talk about COVID and they're like, you know, I said something about masks and they're like, we don't wear masks around here. It's a hoax. And I was like, oh, OK, right. I got to do some quick rearranging of my material in my <laughs> right. head. Right. Because all these jokes, everything we've been writing, I don't know like you're writing your experience yeah and it's all based on the fact that there's been a pandemic where you have to do all these things and there's this whole half of the country that has not been having that experience at all and it's so weird it's like two different planets you know yeah i didn't even think about the possibility of that before the show it was just like totally <laughs> caught off guard like right. oh that's right oh yeah, yeah. there are well, it's like the same thing when you know we're talking about politics at home 
and then we don't bring it up at all on a show because yeah is that like that just seems so odd yeah. to, to not talk about like the insurrection like the big, right like our yeah. kids will be learning about that in history class and comedians are like yeah i don't want to touch that right now it's like that's right it's too crazy. political like, no. i've i've yeah, yeah i've i've done a couple bits about it i did it in arizona and it went okay you know but it's like it's funny because like i imagined having the conversation in my head i was like because one of them was like these corporate zoom shows and i do it and then i go oh what if they get mad and said hey the guy talked about politics and my answer would be how is that political you know what i mean <laughs> which which <laughs> political party is claiming that group of people <laughs> that stormed the capitol building you know so i don't think it's political but yeah, it's, it's it's such a weird time. I feel like nobody, uh, I feel like even the biggest comics barely talk about it, like Chappelle and Burr and all those guys. It's like, how, like you guys can talk, you're millionaires. Like, yeah. you're, <laughs> right. You have no risk anymore, you know? Yeah, they're focused on bringing down the Me Too movement because that's, <laughs> that's a real yeah. right. Well, the real... Yeah, that's exactly what happened with Gaffigan, though. He started to just, you know, but of course he's, He's not, you know, Bill Burr as far as, you know, saying anything. Like, he's known for his apolitical, clean, but he just got fed up and then... That, and then have you guys had Twitter. Any beefs with anybody? Any any old friends that are like, what? what's wrong with you, Johnny or Andrew? And, like, you guys have changed. Or, have you gotten any of that or not really? Nah, not really. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I have I have like acquaintances that I'm like friends with that I didn't realize were had very different uh, political views. And I just like, you know, I'll just check in on their Facebook because other people do, you know, will attack them. And it's just like, oh, let's just see what they're dealing with today. You know, and right. It's really fun to sit and watch post some innocuous status and you come back to it and it's turned into like right. <laughs> political no, debate. But- that is a I do that that thing too where uh you know you have like a few friends that are whatever right wing or whatever and then you something will happen in the news like the insurrection and you're like okay now this will be the one that they actually say something and they didn't have, and you go and check their page and you're like god damn it they found a way to, to, to back that up to you know like there's just nothing you you keep waiting for the thing that'll be like this will bring them around and it never happens Right. It's like they have some sort of flow chart that they follow. Like, if this happens, Antifa. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking yeah. about that with Gaffigan. What's funny about him, though, is he like snapped on Twitter or whatever, but it hasn't shown up in his act yet. But it would be really funny if like his next special was just complete politics. <laughs> like, like, Do you guys think it's weird? <laughs> How half this country is stupid and it's all of you <laughs> that come to my shows. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, I never no, know. no, no, no. He's, uh, but he has Ted, Ted Alexander opens for him. Or what, what right. I've thought about that too because Ted is like super political obviously and uh, but I, he must do a different act on those shows, right? Or like do jokes that he, you know, he's not trying to alienate no, and I mean, I think I, I worked with him, but I think I was like September 2018 or 2019. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty. I mean, not it was it was still edgy, but not not politically edgy, really. So, hmm, but yeah, okay. it's, uh, it's, it is. It's such a weird time. I've I've I unfriended a lot of people. <laughs> Tom has yeah. people that are like, you're so LA man. What happened to you? Right, that I turned. Oh, really? LA made me. <laughs> this right. crazy liberal like, I'm, I'm not even I, like, I just believe certain things in like equality and like that we have to change <laughs> certain things in our society and it's like that's not liberal it's just sort of like good sense I don't know yeah yeah well you guys uh, come you guys come from more of a 50 50 sort of part of the world or part of the country so I I'm from Seattle and so like there's much fewer of that like conflicted old high school friends or whatever yeah yeah you're you're lucky i had a friend who kind of went off the deep end with uh with he he got real he kind of went the other way went very 
sort of like into the Black Lives Matter movement and then started like smashing out police car windows and like, oh yeah, he was in comedy sports and then he just kind of went off the deep end. That's a slippery slope right there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Too, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Improv me. will radicalize people. Okay. You know, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. UCB is a gateway. Yeah. Be a bump. <laughs> Seriously, UCB could be like UCB before. I, I guess it's been taken down a peg now, but it, it almost had like a cult like feel to it. There. I used to live by the the second building the one on that closed on uh yeah the big one sunset the big one and it was like so close to all the scientology stuff and it really did have a feel like you'd walk by and there's all these like young people in hoodies hanging out in front of it and stuff and then you'd i'd walk a little you know farther to where i lived and there's the big scientology building there's like a a bunch of like people in the polo shirts and you're like yeah i don't know this is uh (laughs) That's a similar feel. Like, how did you go broke? Like well, literally, there. I was just thinking, both Scientology and, and UCB doesn't pay either, so yeah. <laughs> they should join right. forces. Yeah. Oh, make I know. Bit, make yeah. big promises. Yeah. yeah exactly. You could be yeah. like Tom Travolta. What is it? Don't think. I think that's. I think that's their slogan too. Is they don't think, just do. Just do. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. a little bit exactly. Is your is your uh, do you guys is, do you hear that Andrew? Yeah, yeah. There's a little. Oh, it sounds weird... like you guys have a monster voice. Oh really? Let's, let's see if it clears up. It might have been an internet thing. I'll just uh, oh, okay. make a little check here on. Just the, the last like sentence you said was like. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. like it it got like a weird sort of distortion. But I, wait, talk right now. I I think it might have fixed. Normal? It. How is it? Testing. One, yep. two. We're good. We're good. good. We'll just have to. So if you yeah okay. if we hear it again Andrew if you, if you if you hear it just stand up and like show them your penis so that's like the sign yeah that your, your audio is weird is we like will confirm that I am circumcised <laughs> if let's do a test here we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's test the emergency broadcast system <laughs> yeah that would be a good uh, test that would uh, that's a good idea Johnny I know you bring up the wiener a lot but it's in this case. Uh, hey, <laughs> I, I, this oh, episode is the whoa. first time. Yeah. Don't, I'm gonna try don't out, pull I might back try the... out some fart material, you know, see how that goes. <laughs> don't pull back the curtain on Johnny's whole act. Johnny, <laughs> I know you go to the wiener quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, fine. Wasn't that. Uh, with, I remember doing shows with you where we'd have to work clean, and it, that was always sort of a dilemma: was the uh, Johnny we- Beater, Tiny Wiener, because that was sort of your opening thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I've met, I've, I've had both responses where it's like, you know, it's oh, it's a clean show. Like, oh, well, I have this bit, and it's met with w- w- Wiener. I mean, who fucking cares? What are you talking about? Yeah, you can. Yeah. I'm not. I'm talking about you know fuck and pussy and all that shit. oh okay no, i just say wiener and then i've also met with yeah let's it's funny but let's not do that <laughs> so i have to continue to right uh, feel it out in the sense like oh, oh let's see mm. <laughs> i'll stand in the back of the room and wait like kind of wave it on to see how i feel right well and plus you named your album that tiny johnny beater tiny wiener right yeah. Did I, Tom, did I tell you that? I don't know if I told the story on the air. I think I did on the podcast. How David Letterman, like when, when I named the album, I just like, you know, it was like daydreaming. I was like, how funny would it be to plug, to hear David Letterman say he has an album, Tiny Wiener. And then it actually, ha- it came true. It happened. And my buddy Connor was in the audience and he was watching David Letterman, like before my segment. And the guy came up, gave him the album and he goes, you could see his mouth. He was like, Johnny Beaner, Tiny Wiener, Johnny Beaner, Tiny Wiener. And he just threw it on the desk. He goes, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so when he says it, he says he has an album available. And then they just, you know, superimpose the album cover over the, the screen. But he never says Tiny Wiener. What a pussy. Oh, come on. Yeah, come on, Letterman. Come on. Yeah. Uh, you should have stopped the show right there. Excuse me. The album's called Tiny Wiener. And I'd no. like to hear you say it, Mr. Letterman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll have to say it. 
<laughs> you think you're so great? You can't say tiny wiener. All right. You're above you said that. a lot of stupid stuff on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh yeah, you and I both had oh, I had my album on the back of my album cover I have me in a uh in a hot dog. Body, uh, what, what, hot dog. Yeah, I'm I'm posing by the Wiener factory. Yeah. And uh we well, great minds think alike, Andrew. Yeah. Wiener comedy. Yeah. yeah. Wiener based. Yeah. Wiener based. <laughs> wiener based humor. The base of the wiener. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was like the grunge era. And then right. there was sort of, you know, the alternative scene. And then there was the wiener based. The wiener base. Humor. Midwest yeah. Wiener <laughs> Midwest wiener base. <laughs> Midwest wiener based comedy. <laughs> the Midwest wiener based comedy stylings of Tom Clark and Johnny Beaner, everybody. Yeah. The ding That's dongs awesome. of comedy. Yes. Midwest wiener That's based. That's a tour you guys can go on. That would yeah. be good. Do all that. I was just thinking about that, how they should bring back the. Remember that was all the rage after uh, the Redneck Comedy Tour or whatever? It was, everything tours. was like the this, the dads of comedy, this, or the original. The beards of kings, comedy. Latin kings, the beards of comedy. There's all these, like, and then there were like the smaller and smaller and smaller iterations of that, you know? Mm-hmm. We should bring that back. We should do the Midwest. Wiener based comedians of comedy. <laughs> it sells itself. It sells itself. Yeah. I'm buying a ticket. It really does. Uh, Johnny, and Johnny, you're in Madison, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I sent Johnny because I knew Johnny's a big Counting Crows fan. So I had an audition for, or I, I submitted myself for a Counting Crows music video audition. And Johnny's like, the boys are back. <laughs> I submitted for Monty the bass player. I didn't. Hear well, they all say they all say have to be able to play, and I was like, I can't play shit, and I'm in Madison. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, that, they're about due. It's only been 22 years since their last album. <laughs> right, you gotta you can't rest on your laurels. I know, jeez. Yeah. 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 Well. Uh... Tom and oh. Steph, what what do we need backup on? Do yeah, that, that was familiar? our pre-show banter. That, that was, was great solid. pre-show that banter. Was solid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me in where we are in the show. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, so we, at the we beginning, when we <laughs> when we started, we said we're back. That's us yeah. starting the show. Then everything right. that we did just now was pre-show banter. This right. now is where we get into the meat of the program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess. No. I'll do the uh, the first thing. Uh, we have we have a one and a half bath here, not to brag, but it's <laughs> one and a half bath. Uh, I am allowed to use the downstairs bathroom, but not allowed to use the upstairs bathroom. Well, you can't go number two in the upstairs. I can't go number two. In the upstairs. You can't, like or you're not allowed to. Not allowed. I can't. I'm afraid of heights. It's very scary up there. It's, it's too high. <laughs> You would think that would help you go, you know, just be like, oh, my right. God, I'm going to shit my pants. Oh, I'll just pull them down. Well, I, don't, I don't allow him to because it doesn't flush well. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, let well, me get all the details first. Steph, do you make stinky duties up on the second floor? It does happen, but I allow I, I allow myself to do it. And I just caught her doing it. So she up, up for about the last year and a half. I didn't. I didn't know she was doing it, but she's been doing it the whole damn time, guys. <laughs> oh my God! In my defense: the downstairs bathroom, the light switch has been broken for the last year. Pandemic. And he, we don't know how to fix it. <laughs> so we, I can't see what happened, You know what's going on in there. So I. Have to <laughs> so wait, that's Tom... like very fixable problems, but uh... yeah. I love how Tom is scared of heights or he's scared of the dark. Either way, he's got a shit in fear. (laughs) No, but, uh, okay. I have so many questions, but so it doesn't fly. So your upstairs bathroom is like, it's like an RV situation. You're like a tour bus. Like it's like nobody shits except, but then Steph, you're cheating and you've been really not even hesitating or you're only using it in emergencies. Yeah, it's like, not it's as like it just happened, you know, and just happened. You're like, oh, that just happened. Oh, I was you peeing. Know? Oh, I was oh, peeing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
That's a, that's a, that's a very different situation when that happens for a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just being, oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. It just happens. Oh, oh yeah, no, it does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think it's not a strong flushing toilet. Right, it doesn't so flush well. I have, I have, I'm Midwestern. Cheese curd. <laughs> yeah, Midwestern based giant <laughs> turd comedy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, wait. Okay, that was what I was gonna ask. Is like, Steph, you you believe that your poops are more? I feel flushable. like a you're very like. Feminine. <laughs> yeah, you poop like a lady. Not to use gender stereotypes, but yeah. yeah. Can you guys see that? This is one for our YouTube fans. I was going to get this for my brother, but I wonder if Tom should get it. Undefeated toilet clogging jam. <laughs> Beautiful. I love and you. Just it, says, it says massive dump division. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Every time Johnny pulls up the phone... I, my heart stops for a bit because it's like he could just be showing us a big turd he took like an hour ago. Oh, like he I takes a lot of pictures. Then. So I, I went to his wedding and it's the first wedding I've ever been to where they mentioned how Johnny and uh, oh boy, I forget Aaron. Aaron. Johnny and Aaron. Uh, they it's leave. okay. She does, she's not a listener, Tom. She no, won't no, be offended. No, she'll never hear this. <laughs> they would leave little love notes in their in the toilet for each other. They'd like oh. love. Oh, here comes another photo. No, I'll try. Well, I was just going to try to pull up what you were just talking about. Wait, Well, yeah, they'd leave like love notes. Like it, it was. Like, I, didn't, like, I hadn't heard this in the. What do you mean in the toilet? Like on the on the top of the toilet? No, in the bowl. Of, they're just floating on a piece yeah. of toilet. You take a Sharpie, you write uh, on toilet paper and you lay it on the water. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, right. Sort of. <laughs> I'll, uh, I don't want to take Johnny. I don't see it if it's downstairs, though. Johnny, can I do that? Please do it, please. Of course. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not selfish. It, I'm not selfish. <laughs> I used to I used to shovel uh, pubes in the driveway when it would snow, and then other people started doing it and send me the pictures, and it's just great. And the more, the merrier. You know. It's like that movie, Pay It Forward. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm Mother Teresa, but I admire and respect what she did, and I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so tom basically what you're saying is you think you should be allowed to go number two upstairs because steph does and who yeah. could really argue with this i don't know that's that's a tough one I, I of course i'm backing you up yeah what would happen if you did i would just yell at him like crazy truth, truth, truth be told <laughs> fellas <laughs> when the cat's away the mouse will play you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that's what that I think that's what that phrase was meant for. Yeah. I'm imagining a gritty HBO drama like the affair or whatever but that is like it's just really dark and stuff is like you're something's off. I can feel something's wrong. <laughs> it's just upstairs getting, getting what Tom, Tom, Tom has like two cell phones for some reason <laughs> it's like it's very suspicious behavior <laughs> okay I'm pooping upstairs yeah but but it's oh. it is it is way less often and and there's a sense of fear if I get a floater so <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> sounds like a, if you just had some stronger plumbing it would solve the whole yeah, issue. Pandemic. We got this pandemic going on. <laughs> yeah, if they're not fixing a, a light switch, I don't think they're going to strengthen the plumbing. Right. Yeah, I'm not handy like you. You got like a, didn't you, you, you guys, do you have that Airbnb in uh, Palm Springs still? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not very, I did work construction, but it's amazing how I've forgotten everything I've learned. And then now it's like, it's the worst case scenario because people expect you to, to be able to do stuff and I start and I try and then it, it gets really screwed up and I do a bad job and Heidi gets nervous. Like and... The cavalry home edition and you guys come to my house and fix these things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should let me try to fix. I think the light switch like, I could probably do, but the, the, the plumbing, it would be a disaster, but you should let me try. 
because that would be good content for the podcast. Yeah, you just pull it, you move a bus away, and he says, strengthen that shitter. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just Tom crying because it's the first time he's taking his shit upstairs. <laughs> you don't know how much this means to me. <laughs> you guys have changed my life. Yeah. Listen, I got a backup from Andrew, Johnny. Oh, gosh, of course. Yeah, I mean, woof. you got it. You got, you got to let him just do it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe start with a birthday, Christmas, you know, and then, yeah. and then just a little more often. Right, and start with ones where, you, where you're where you pretty confident you're not going to, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't go to the crab, fe- crab feast trough. Yeah. And then... Maybe, <clears throat> maybe, maybe go to the, maybe go downstairs and then, like, Cut it off and finish it upstairs. Like oh, the first for God's couple sakes. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. That's what great. An un- what an great. unpleasurable experience that sounds like. Yeah. We, uh, we, we brought up poop for you, Johnny. Yeah, that was great. That was dedicated to you. Oh, you guys are the sweetest. The next one is next. Next one's a little more down the middle. So. All right. So, all right. Yeah. Okay, well, well now you feel backed th- up. Let's let's do it then. That's what you're gonna ask the toilet. Oh, hey, oh, hey, <laughs> did it cut out? Hey, yeah, no, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm with you, Tom. I think there's really no way, two ways around it. It's, you, you know. Anything to defend that? Anything to defend yeah. what? Like, to fight these chance. Mean, they say I'm not gonna let you do it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is yeah. legally like, binding, I guess. <laughs> She's like, this is a podcast, Tom. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're not pooping up there. Yeah, it's not happening. It's too close to the bedroom. I thought this was legally binding. No, yeah, you're the, that's know. the Calvary. That's the Wrong. Calvary. That will get held up. Yeah, a court would look right. favorably that's upon right. that. <laughs> how has, how, Steph, how have you been doing it for a year and a half without Tom, without you knowing? Or was that a stretch? Exaggerating. It have been, I've only done it a few times upstairs. Starting when? About a year and a half ago? Mm. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I can't, like I said, I can't see. I can't, I have to put my phone on with the, with the light. <laughs> little music. To... Like a club. Like, like a disco. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a club. Uh, well, okay. It's only fair. I feel like uh, we don't want to gang up on you, Steph. So what, Steph, what do you need backup on? I need backup on, I want to host a comedy show on in our backyard and he, oh. Tom doesn't want me to well because I always worry about getting murdered and he's like no people will know where we live yeah she's always worried about that like we'll take but, a but hold on I'm my argument for, <laughs> hold on it, but I think it's a good way of getting money I can charge you know like 20 30 bucks a person you can fit eight nine people back there get a few strangers to know where we live <laughs> Mm-hmm. and uh a nice show well first of all it's it's not a it's not a bat it's an la backyard it's like it's a patio space that fits about 10 people kind of uh not comfortably um so and then and she's always that's, worried. A, lot, that's a lot for her yeah, isn't, i mean but isn't that how a lot of those la shows are it's like a, a big number for an la show yeah i don't want too many people right now anyway so I can't even take a picture in front of the house for fear of the address of our house getting exposed. Like we got paparazzi coming to our house or something. It's it's silly. No, but she's well, I, willing to have a, a public event where just strangers are buying tickets because she so we can make uh, twenty bucks a head. But I would do my email list and people I know first. Well, that's the thing. It's such a limited ticket number. I think you're probably only going to get people that you're reasonably comfortable with yeah. knowing where you live but i think on a larger scale a larger scale i think the issue is she's very she's uh, uh she's been doing comedy about eight years i've been doing it way too long uh, i've been doing it over 25 years so there's a certain like <laughs> the uh she says i'm pessimistic when it comes to comedy related stuff like she has ideas like what if we did a show here like i'm gonna 
reach out to this place, reach out to that. And I'm always like, ah, but this place, when you reach out to them, they're always jerks. And that <laughs> business is always a bunch of idiots. And uh-huh. that kind of... so You're the jaded like, vet. What's that? You're the jaded vet. Jaded vet. Yeah. She's the hot shot young rookie. Yeah. So I think that's more the issue is more like that she, she has... She has hope. ideas. I have hope. She has hope. And, and I know. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, I'm backing you up, Steph. I think good for hope. That's that's we all need hope. We need uh I'm trying to be less, you know, cuz Tom, I'm kind of like you. I definitely have a lot of pessimism about stand up and the industry and all that stuff and uh but I am trying to be more um open to like I, you know, things could work out. You never know. It's possible. Something good could happen. So that's like the energy I'm trying to go into this year with. So yeah, I say go for it and just be clear to the guests, which bathroom they're allowed to use. I just say that'd be my only caveat, but not in the house. Oh, no. we, we got a bucket. Not in the house. Yeah. Out. Put a bucket out. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them where the nearest Starbucks is and then they could just use that. Well, what? What if you did this out of fear of just, you know, strangers knowing where you live? What if you said, hey, fun, funky, fresh backyard comedy show in the Agora Hills area? Inquire at, you know, and then here's how you buy tickets. And so, you know, each person that gets a ticket, they don't they don't find out, you know, the address of your place until. Do you want to say your address even on the better. podcast just so we yeah, know what, what is we're talking your, about? Uh, what is your address and key Social code? Security just so I can upload this podcast later. <laughs> no, what – here, I got an even better idea. So like Johnny said, except we take it – because you know how they have all these secret shows? That's like the cool thing. They do secret comedy. It's like we won't tell you <laughs> where this show is or who's on the lineup because <laughs> you, you wouldn't know. be that excited if you found out. So right. we're not telling you. It's a mystery lineup, a mystery show, right? We do that, but you make it really, you make it so secret, you like blindfold people like a block away, and then you like put them in the back of a van and drive them. And like like, the bullet movie, just hold their hand and guide them. Yeah, bird bomb. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you sit them down, you take their blindfold off, they're like, oh my God, you know? And then they think they're going to see. Yeah, they think they're gonna see Chappelle or something, and they, right. you know. right. and then surprise, it's us. And then you do the show, and then you blindfold them right. back in the van. They think so we're back. leading to a, a, a bigger area. They're like, "Oh, okay, this must be the waiting area." It's like, <laughs> this yeah. is the show, baby. Yeah. yeah. When do we get in the rocket ship? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I love the idea of blindfolding people and just just this. Walking them like a block, <laughs> blindfolded right. to our home. <laughs> Shouldn't raise any red flags. And then all your neighbors are like, "What kind of weird sex shit are they into?" <laughs> Holy moly! Yeah. Scientologists. They're a the fun Clark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, big time Scientologists. That sounds like the safe house in Milwaukee. You can make them hula hoop to get in. You know? Oh yeah, you can make it uh, add some elements to it. Yeah, yeah. All it all sorts of. Safe house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> All right, so I'm, do you feel backed up? Yeah, totally. Will you? <laughs> That's what it? we do. That's what we do. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do here. I will let you. Wait, let me make it more dramatic. I'll let you do it. Whoa. Whoa. He loves it because I don't. Uh, I send all the Venmo money to him because I get unemployment and he doesn't. So that was that was oh. the least romantic kiss I've ever seen on a screen. <laughs> we didn't do that. Uh, Tom, you gave away all your leverage. I thought you were gonna kind of say, "Yeah, if I can take a dump upstairs, you can have a comedy show in the backyard." That would have been the classic sort of sitcom. Yeah, but no, you're too good of a guy for that. Yeah, I should have. Dang it. How about you? You're allowed to go to the bathroom outside. I like Aww. that. Yeah. <laughs> she did. That's that's sweet of you, I guess. Outside. She caught me peeing outside one time. So. <laughs> Wait, which bathroom weren't you allowed into in that scenario? 
<laughs> just a, it was just a general he, preference. He goes so. out there oh, okay. and the bars every night. And I'm looking at, he's looking over the fence. I'm like, what's he looking at? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I bet he's pissing. And he was. Yeah, Tom, Tom, you like to pee. I remember you peed in the parking structure at Dr. Grin's right in front of the car. You like to pee in all sorts of places. See? I, I, in front of comedy I think I have a photo of it, actually. It's not that I like doing it. It's, it's a necessity in order to prevent uh, UTI. UTI. Can you guys get oh, okay. Yeah. It's medical. I, medical situation. Yeah. Dr. Grin. <laughs> Dr. Grin's. Dr. I don't want to have to see Dr. Grin about my UTI. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I, I, I didn't realize we shared that, Johnny. I, didn't, I thought that was something only my wife had seen. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm flattered and honored. And I look at that photo every night before I go to bed. Doc <laughs> Dr. Grin's is, a, is like a good club that's been around for a long time. So I think comedians, you can kind of, you get too close to something and you forget. It's kind of like go bananas. But you forget the utter stupidity of those names. Like Dr. Grin's. To, to an outsider, that just must sound so st stupid. Well, somebody said uh that it was like when you complain about like a club didn't pay you or somebody's check bounce and be like, ah, knuckleheads didn't pay me on time. <laughs> you know, it's like knuckleheads? You expected <laughs> knuckleheads to pay you on time? Right. You expected go bananas check yeah. to clear? You should honestly be shocked when your right. <laughs> check cashes from Dr. Grins. Right. <laughs> Sir laughs a lot, hasn't paid yeah. me yet. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> You are no knight of the round table, I can assure right. you. I'm taking uh, giggles to Judge Judy because <laughs> giggles. they owe me. Yeah. Um, What's the most ridiculous name you've performed at? Do you guys have one? We said a lot. Uh, Johnny, do you have one? I'm, I, I can't. I don't know. Yeah, because like I say, it's like you get too close to it, and then it doesn't even – like I started – the club I started at was called Giggles. And, right. I, and I totally it was like nose deaf to that. I had no ability to know how dumb that sounded until one time I was watching a uh, tough crowd. This is when that was, when that show was still on the air. Yeah. And Nick DiPaolo had just been at the club and then he was on the show and he was telling Colin Quinn, he got, he got in this big fight and someone threw a glass at him. Of course, you know, Nick DiPaolo, of course. And, it, and then he, uh, he was talking about it on the show and then they all, but they couldn't get past the name. They were like just dying laughing that Nick DiPaolo was playing a club called Giggles. Yeah. <laughs> like just making fun of the name. Of and I was like, why is that fun? And I was like, oh yeah. And then I thought about it. I was like, yeah, that is kind of stupid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like and when I you just caught laughs or, you know. Yeah. See? When you hear comedians like complaining, like Zanies doesn't even book me now. You know, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, you're insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a club that was I had a club that, club that tried really hard and it was called Cookies and it was spelled K O O K I E Z. That's like Oh, too <laughs> Cookies. <laughs> comedy K's and Z Bonkers. There's a lot of um comedy clubs, loonies, there's a lot of comedy clubs making light of the mentally ill. They're gonna get they they gotta be careful no, in these bin. uh politically correct well, times yeah loony bin you know these are these are cancelable terms pretty soon cuckoo's nest there's cuckoo's nest somewhere in either minnesota or wisconsin oh yeah yeah it's uh we got to change it guys the yeah. three yeah. Of them. Should, you while we're at it. yeah we should open one yeah just called uh mental illness <laughs> <laughs> yeah Come yeah down to Men I'm playing mental illness this weekend. <laughs> right. Thursday's bipolar college night. disorders. <laughs> yeah, bipolar comedy club. With a Z. Yeah. Bipolars. Uh well, yeah, I'm okay. I see. You both feel backed up. This is great. You are on opposite sides of the issues, but you come here to the cavalry to get and back. And now up. your marriage is even better than it ever has been. Thank you, Andy. Yay. Johnny, you've changed You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Johnny, do you have something? Uh, um, well, let me, you know what? This is fun because we have a lovely couple here. Let me ask, you know, <clears throat> um, and this is par for the course. Um, who 
farted in front of the other first and how long before you did that in front of each other? I just, this is a relationship question I like to ask. Who farted first? Probably I, me. Probably Steph, yeah. Um, big, and was, uh, it, was it early? Fart. I'm actually doing a podcast tomorrow, uh, a, a fart podcast tomorrow. A fart cast. <laughs> a fart cast. <laughs> Will there be speaking or is it strictly right? <laughs> We're really playing with the art form. Right. <laughs> Audio. So there's cool. a lot of ways we can go with it, you know. Right. I call Tom Fart. That's his nickname. Yeah. Fart. Yeah. She'll be like Fart. <laughs> yeah. And then I have my mom calling you Fart. Yeah. That's kind of hot. Yeah. Of course you'd think that, Johnny. <laughs> Nothing puts you in your place like being called Fart. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like one of the names like they'd call something on Game of Thrones when they're trying to take oh. away their entire identity and soul. Reek. Yeah, there's yeah, Reek. Reek. Yeah. yeah, it's basically a modern version of Reek. <laughs> That's all I talk about lately. Yeah. Whenever the scammers call me, I always I try the name Fart. My name's Tony Fart. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. I love. We love your videos. We love those videos. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, they 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 sometimes they'll hang on the phone because I'll be very upset about it. Tony Fart. What is? Where did you do that? Yeah. Do you do you find by answering a lot of those scam calls you get more like it's inviting? Because I I want to know just to like not get because I'm not using them for content or anything. I just like to not get them anymore. But like, do you find yeah. the more you answer, the more you get? Or no. no? Well, it's the opposite i feel like i'm on some sort of list like i i have to find them not, like i'll look through my emails for them like in the spam i, I, I really don't oh, get that's great call. Yeah. Yeah. So oh so like we should explain quick that but for people listening yeah. tom does these great videos where you basically prank reverse prank call these scam callers or whatever right and uh that is so funny that you have to seek out. You were placed on a do not call list by answering my the phone too yeah. many times. And you're pissed about it. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, Steph, Steph's joined in too. So yeah, Steph, I did one too. Steph just oh, did. nice. So it's like, yeah, we just, uh, it's just funny. We just. Sometimes he won't even be recording. And it's just for pure joy that he talks to the phone. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll just. Are you, do you have two phones do you use each other's phones or are you filming with the camera on your computer or how do you like yeah. when you get a caller id and you're like oh this is it do you, like, you know, use each other's phones yeah either i'll turn on the video on on my ipad i'll, I'll oh, okay yeah, yeah. or i'll i'll go on iMovie quick and just start recording i'll be like hold on a minute hold on please hold on and then <laughs> <laughs> i'm taking so much yeah. please take it right don't tell my wife i'm pooping upstairs <laughs> i've i've answered every once in a while out of like sheer boredom especially during the pandemic you'll see it sometimes it's out of like stupid optimism like uh you know when you really need good news or something and you see a number and you're like i don't know maybe maybe right. this is it maybe they're calling maybe i want to answer this one you know and of course it's a scam but yeah. sometimes I answer it and they seemed honestly shocked. Do you ever get that? Like they seem they, they, totally unprepared for like a human being to be like, they must've made like three weeks worth of calls. No one picked up and then someone picks up and it just like throws them totally off and they're not ready for. Right. You know, You'll hear like the phone call, go like they have. <laughs> right. All this rustling, like, <laughs> like hello? Oh, hello, what? Uh, I'm IBM. I mean, this is IBM. I mean, I'm Phil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's I, I run, I've learned the script, so I'll like run through the script with them. I'll be like, all right, so now what, what are we doing now? We're getting to the point. Uh, something happened to my social security card. What do I do? <laughs> like They're like, well, yeah, we need your information. Yeah, I know that. I know that. What's the next? <laughs> like, I'll just like speed them along sometimes. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Like have that. you ever have you ever worked? on the opposite end i when i was in la i went i got as far as like the first day of training for a call center it was they sucked me into it because they were like oh this is for you know advocacy for the environment or something you know but basically it was like just trying to get money from people 
Right. And I, I, I went to one day of like, and they showed me, they had me watch someone do it and the calls and the, you see a big office full of it. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. And I just left. I was like, I, 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 I did really it needed one, the money. Yeah. Once in college, I did like fundraising for our school. And this is, I went to, I mean, this is the early nineties. So like the, the great thing was I could make a long distance call for free. That's how old I am. Uh, so I'd be, you know, I call my brother, call my parents, whoever I wanted. But then my friend and I started to abuse it. We would just call like Australia, just <laughs> and we'd be like, "What time is it there?" Oh, like we'd just be so excited about talking to a guy from Australia. Like, what, what do you do there? Like, how am I in college? What is? How is this exciting? I'm an international studies major, and I'm excited about a phone call to Australia. Well, mm-hmm. see, you were studying international <laughs> things. When I, was in, when I was in high school, I worked at a telemarketing place where it was inbound. So, like, you know, the, like you'd see infomercials for certain things. And uh, we would just take the calls and do the script on the computer. So I knew all their codes. And I only worked there for a little bit. So then when I would see ads for stuff that I knew went to that call center, I would call and I would be like, I would halfway order something, and then I'd be like, I'm just kidding, Susie. This is this is Rod in the back, just doing a just doing a test. Why don't you go ahead and F3 your system and give yourself a half hour break? Because they would like do stuff like that. So I'll just send people on break. <laughs> because like I knew I knew the lingo and the codes. Right. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. I did. Well, yeah. I had to call for fundraising. So I'd be like. If I saw they donated fifty dollars last year, my goal was my job was to get a hundred bucks. But I would just always be like, "Can you give fifty dollars again?" Okay. I, I never. I can't pretend to do sales. No, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't. We lost money. Our <laughs> school nearly shut down. <laughs> yeah. so it's your fault. Yeah. Lazy uh, fundraisers. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was. I think that's the only phone calling I did. Did you? Well, she I does do, it. I do. Well, I was. When I was a kid, I loved prank calls. I would call, <clears throat> there was a lawyer in LA called Larry H. Parker. I don't know if you heard his commercials. He's like, I'll fight for you. Yeah, and I would yeah. Call, like, Hi, I'm Larry's wife. Can you get Larry on the phone? <laughs> and I would do this at my dad's uh, shop. He owned an automotive repair shop. And he would he would go towards me and be like, are you call- calling people again? Stop it. Like, cause was, and she's like 11 years old calling and acting like Larry Parker's wife. Like, what if he gets on the phone? It's like, hey, you little nasty thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Or I'd call like QVC, the shopping network. and I'd Right. Be, yeah. Oh, Cindy, wait, did we, we, we go to college together? And she's like, and she would play along and she's like, she's like, uh oh yeah what was your major and i was like dad what's a major (laughs) (laughs) uh i you guys had so much imagination i made very few prank calls but we i remember just knowing the 1-800 jenny phone number from the commercials for jenny craig and i knew that i at pay phones you could do 1-800 numbers for free so we would always call 1-800-JENNY, but then I feel like there was nothing, we we had nothing after that. We just called the number and they'd answer and we kind of laugh because it worked and then we didn't say anything then clever you hang and up. up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was very fruitless for everyone. When I was in when I was in grade school, this is like, I, sh- I feel bad telling this. It makes me sound like an asshole. But we, I used to call, I, I didn't do this by myself. Like if I had a friend over, we would call someone else at the school that we weren't friends with and we would act like we were someone else and we'd invite them to spend the night and then we would just die laughing thinking about them showing up to spend the night oh my at someone's God. house they weren't that's invited awful to. i like, know it's really mean it's like this close to spilling pig's blood on a <laughs> right i'm carrie like, but were they exactly. the cool, like were the, the it's like the jocks that you would mess with they weren't nerds. No, I, it was the other the other end of the spectrum. Oh. Yeah, that's why it's not a it's not a feel good story. But it was I mean, we really laughed hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> I was gonna ask Andrew, and this is a little off topic, but did you I we I think you would go to Scottsdale, stand up Scottsdale with uh Jeff Dine. 
Were you the one who got shoved out the hotel window? Oh and- yeah, yeah, that's me. That's one of my top credits. <laughs> no, stand. So that's what it was. Called. It was that was stand up Scottsdale when it was Howard Hughes's club, right? That was right. the name of it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it was me and the like. There would be other people who got thrown out a window at a comedy. I don't know. <laughs> you, me one. and Jeff Die, another comedian friend of mine, and uh, Brian Moot. And his brother Pat, we would go to spring training to watch the Mariners. You know, we were living in LA, so we'd go to spring training every year. We tried to finagle it with some sort of comedy work or whatever. And oh. usually the best we could do is like Jeff could probably headline a club, then maybe me and Brian Brian could feature, I could feature, maybe we there was another club in town, uh there's like a million comedy clubs in Phoenix, but there was like smaller clubs where maybe me or Brian could headline. So we we tried to figure it out so we all had work. But this time uh, we were staying in some, I feel like it was like a Motel 6 that they put you up in. It was in the, uh, the club was in the hotel, I think. No, it was, or, it was or, nearby, but it was like a chain. Ho- I know it was like a, either Best Western or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was a really ratty motel. And they, you know, it had like the, the kind of place where the window it was on the ground floor and like, there's no hallways, you know, it's like a motel. So you're coming in from the parking lot straight to your room. And yeah, me and Jeff were just like, you know, I don't know, we're wrestling or something. And just like, <laughs> he just, Jeff is like a, he seems like this pretty boy or whatever, but he's like a big, strong dude. He's like six, four. He's like very works out. He's very strong. And he just kind of tossed me over the bed and it's on film. It's being filmed the whole time. And I think it's Brian's brother's Pat. And he's like, and you can hear Brian in the in the corner because Brian's like the dad of the. He was always like, guys, we're going to be late for the show. And we're all like getting drunk and watching baseball. And, don't care. and he's like, come on, guys. And uh, you can hear Brian's voice on the tape going, you're going to you're going to throw him out the window. You're going to throw him out the window. <laughs> and I go, and I go into the plate glass window and it shatters and uh and miraculously unharmed i i'm telling you it's like i was jesus or something not to be sacrilegious to our calvary listeners but it was amazing that i had no cuts at all on me i mean that, yeah i mean it's it's like literally like I it's mean, a huge window i mean it's yeah it's like the you know half the wall is like window or whatever it's like one of those big <laughs> motel windows <laughs> drop through your back i know i very easily could have died i very rarely think about that as one of the times i could have died but yeah what a horrible way to die too like uh (laughs) opener comedian (laughs) killed after being thrown through plate glass window bizarre wrestling incident yeah Yeah. by la and then they have to explain who jeff by last comic standing star (laughs) jeff (laughs) die like yeah, long winded. No, I remember watching that video. And I think I just thought it was, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like a car wreck. You know what happens in the video and just, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot that we even posted the video. I wonder if that's still up anywhere. We should try and find it and I'll put it on the the tweet on the Calvary. Calvary. Yeah. Now I can't even say it. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's a trick. <laughs> I always have to look at your square because it says it right there. Yeah, it's there's a guide. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, oh yeah, that the yeah club. that was uh we and then we would keep going back to Arizona every year to do those sh- you know shows. It kind of evolved. We did different clubs or whatever. And then did you ever do the one? Man, I don't even remember what it was called. But there was a club in the hotel. Maybe that's the one you're thinking of. And and this guy uh, Brian uh, Mullins ran it. Do you remember him? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, I and mean, yeah, Howard. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, we, it was Howard did the one that we were at the first time. Anyway, yeah, so that was that was like those was fun. But then it was like back in the days where you weren't making nobody was making any money. It really, it really didn't matter. Now it's like you do comedy. It's like if you go on the road, you kind of have to come home with some money. <laughs> what, what was the aftermath of that? I mean, what did the yeah, what did is they the, make you pay for the window? Oh yeah, well, uh, we weren't gonna pay for it because. At first we said, I think we tried to say like, uh, we didn't do it or or no, I think I tried to say that I tripped. It was like a battered wife or something like, oh, I fell into it. It was, you know, 
<laughs> and then like I wanted them to get nervous because it's like, oh, maybe they'll think we'll sue because I tripped on the ottoman or something. Meanwhile, it's this like flea bag motel. They're not worried about. It. They're like, you, they're going. We're gonna lock. And basically, what happened was they locked us out of the room because Howard. No one had a credit card down. So, like, uh, Howard was on the hook for it, and he wasn't going to pay for it. I see. And so they basically locked us out of the room till we uh, paid for it. And I think me and Jeff split it or something. What does what a hotel room window cost these days or those days? That's funny. I do not even remember. But it was, it was a few hundred bucks. It wasn't something that, like, completely broke me. And I was in a really good mood because that's when I – I remember right before or after that, I found out I was, I got this the job working for the um, Norm Macdonald uh, sports show on Comedy Central. So I was, it was like my first real comedy Hollywood job. So I was like so excited. I I was, didn't like, sweat the money. Need more windows to break. <laughs> yeah, I was like let's break, let's break a few more. <laughs> We're partying tonight. No window is safe. I didn't know you worked on Norm's show. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I kind of had a weird uh, job. I wore, I wrote this like comedy sports blog uh, just on my own, and then uh, the golf man Stu submitted uh, submitted me for this uh, job. Submitted me too. Oh, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So then I got it, and then. Um, but it was like kind of weird. It was a great Norm's like the coolest guy ever. He's so funny and it was a really cool experience but also it's kind of weird because i was like not quite i was like working for comedy central and also the show and then i never really felt like all the way included in the group of writers on the show and then yeah. the comedy central people are all in new york so i didn't feel that connected to them either and it i was kind of like into my weird own little world with my laptop and stuff but it was still a great experience and so you weren't in the writers room. You were just sort of. I would go. I would go, but I wasn't like a union writer. You know what I mean? I submitted. By the end, I got enough confidence to submit jokes and stuff, and uh, that was the funnest part. But at the beginning, I was just very much in my own little little world. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so it's yeah. kind of tough when you're so close to something, and you and those writers he had were like, you know, all from early days SNL or like early day Simpsons or, you know, Letterman. And like, they, they were all like top, 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 like legendary writers. And so you're like kind of sniffing around wanting to be cool like them. And they have no, <laughs> just he, no patience for it. We met him in uh, Oxnard. Uh, he was working the club in Oxnard up the road from us. And uh, he, he had done Summerfest in Milwaukee. And I remember the story about him was uh, he, he, they told him, like, Norm, you can't, no harsh language. You got to keep relatively clean. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, I'll keep it clean. And then uh, he gets up there. He's like, oh, man, Milwaukee, man. It's hotter than a fucking cocksucker up here. <laughs> <laughs> First words. And I told him that story. He's like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, Milwaukee, huh? <laughs> And he's just such an odd. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's no, just, he's so he's so smart. You know, he's like everyone. He plays it like people. He want it's like he wants people to think he's dumb or something. But he he's very very. He's always the smartest person in the room. And then he he's very kind and yeah, nice. But yeah. But then of course, if you try to tell him to to do something, uh, yeah. I remember like I was so excited when the show came out because. I was just a big fan of his and I was like, Oh, now he's going to have to do all the like press. So he's going to go on Howard Stern. He's going to go on Letterman. This is going to be just fun to see him on all the shows, but he would go on those shows and then they'd ask him like, Oh, so what is this show you're doing? He goes, eh, I don't know. And then he wouldn't plug it or anything. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're, yeah. we're getting canceled for sure. <laughs> yeah. he, when he was in Oxnard, he let uh, Barry Sobel do a guest set. But the guest like a half an hour he did like a half an hour guest set <laughs> oh and norm doesn't norm's like yeah go ahead yeah, care. yeah 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 and he just uh and then he's interviewing he, and barry was shooting a documentary uh about himself and he had interviewing norm and norm's just like yeah barry's a good guy you know and uh, and he's like norm tell him uh tell him about when i was on the tonight show what johnny carson said oh yeah he was on the tonight show with johnny carson <laughs> 
<laughs> doesn't know what to say. <laughs> he said that I was really good, like one of the best young performers he's ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he was one of the, yeah. He's just, like, <laughs> he doesn't remember anything. He's just yeah. feeding him lines. But he's so nice. And we were hanging out and he was like, we were getting along. And then Barry's like, come on, Norm, we're going to this you know bar and norm norm just kind of took him away from us took him away from us yeah yeah but he's uh yeah one of the best yeah he was very very sweet guy uh very cool to me although it, it is like it's just intimidating to be around people you kind of idolize you know right uh, i remember we so like at the very beginning i was kind of disappointed initially like in what, what my job was so i was like you know, I'm going to I'm going to kind of work my way into the whole the the actual show. You know, I want to write jokes for the show, not just for the blog on the website and stuff. So I, I had this whole legal pad and I really took told the producer, like, I want a chance to pitch, you know. And so they set up this like separate time. And it was Norm and the this guy, Mike Gibbons, the executive oh, yeah. producer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mike. And uh, I had this big legal pad of like ideas, you know, that I wanted <laughs> to do on the show. And and by the way, Comedy Central was in my ear. They were like telling me like, hey, you know, try to get Norm more involved with the web stuff because they they were trying to marry those two things together. And Norm wanted nothing to do really with like promoting the show on the website and stuff. So I I had to come up with all of these kind of web centered and I pitched like the first one, and both Mike and Norm just like stared at me and then kind of looked at each other like what why what what is this me who is this guy why are we and then i pitched like and then i was like okay and then you know when you like you think you have like a million good ideas but then the first two get nothing and then you're like okay not those all right let me go to the next page and you like have oh actually they just get worse from here all right i'm gonna just leave now right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really tough one. that is like a helpless feeling when you're... Uh, it's the worst god it's the worst feeling in the world yeah it's uh i'm trying yeah, who uh, who else was a writer on that show? Well, they were like kind of a mix. So it was like, like I said, there was like legendary people like Frank Sebastiano and um, uh, oh, what is it? Steve O'Donnell, who was like uh, wrote for Letterman. He like invented the top ten list, you know. Oh. And that, but then there were there were some younger oh. guys too. I think Sean O'Connor, who's like a LA comic uh, and does a lot of shows now, and um, Doug Perkins, who. Uh, it's a funny guy too, based out of LA. And they were like, I think those were the only two who were like close to my age. Okay. Oh, and then uh, you know who was on it too was um, uh, Kevin Brennan. Oh, was yeah. so funny because he was so like uh, he was so funny, and then he's he's like very bitter, you know, about everything. And he would always bitch about Tina Fey because like in his mind, Tina Fey like took all his because Tina Fey took week like got weekend update when he thought he was going to get weekend update and then mm -hmm. tina fey's sitcom got picked up when his sitcom didn't <laughs> right. and he in his mind tina fey stole and he goes one time i saw i was driving and i saw her in a crosswalk and i could have just run her over man <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's like yeah but he had her, she had her her baby in her stroller so i couldn't do it <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> Did she <report> this? <laughs> It's like, oh, thank God she had her baby. You didn't run her over. Baby saved her life. Yeah, yeah. That, that loophole. Yeah, <laughs> the old baby defense. Yeah, yeah. And you are, and you're no longer with Stu. No, no, we we parted we're, ways. It's like, like we're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. So it's like awkward. I don't know. It was uh, Stu was cool, you know, and uh, was so nice to me and was like my first real sort of agent but then he we kind of like broke up a couple different times because like the first time i you know just wasn't working out so i was like i'm gonna try and do something else and then uh but then like of course i wasn't doing anything better on my own <laughs> you know right. so then he he called because he got a new job at some other thing and then we got tried it again and there was like nothing and i was like what am i doing i'm just gonna focus on my own thing and i don't think we're not helping each other so yeah yeah, he's uh, he's he's in a, he calls me sometimes when he gets jobs for himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, just to let you know that things Tell are going you. good. Yeah. Well, you happened. have like a citizenship problem, right? Like he got like, like he was like Canadian and then and then didn't right. get it renewed in time or something. 
yeah, some sort of work visa and you couldn't be living in LA with a, with a work visa. And he had yeah. to go to Canada, so he couldn't officially work anywhere, but he was working somewhere. So he couldn't be an agent. Yeah. It was very, uh, it's, I've been with him yeah. for 20 years. So it's like, it's, uh, <laughs> I've seen it all. I've seen it. Yeah. All. And he's been at like a, a bunch of, I remember the first, when he was at Innovative, I was like blown away. I went to the office and it was like so cool in Santa Monica. And I was like, oh my God, I've made it, you know? Cause that's what you think when you first get representation, you're like, I'm never going to have to email a booker again. <laughs> like I'm out. <laughs> They're going to do yeah. this all for me. This is amazing. And of course it's not true. You've got to hustle your, forever until you're dead. But, uh, careful, careful, Andrew. <laughs> oh wait, optimism. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But we're then uh, we're going to do shows in our backyards. We're going to take over. Woo! No, but then and then the the subsequent offices were like less and less impressive. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. One of those offices where they're like, do you need a bottle of water? Yes, yeah. I do need a bottle of water and one when I leave here, too. Yeah. yeah I always take the water. That's the one L.A. thing I learned. Well. Andrew, uh, do you have anything you needed back up on? Uh, I need to back up on uh, how Stu doing, but it sounds like good. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. No, wait. How about how about this? What can we uh, promote for yeah, you two? What what, what are, um anything you want to plug to the listenership? That's what we call our fans. Yeah, we have our podcast. Well, we've kind of been. Well, we have a bunch of episodes up there. Yeah, so we got our podcast, the I'm a Rescue podcast, uh, anchor.fm slash I'm a Rescue. We have like it's, over 50 episodes up there. It's a bunch of different people we interview that have overcome something. Like we interviewed the JetBlue flight attendant, who uh, it was a kind of a famous story where he told everyone to F off and then he went down the emergency exit. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Interviewed oh, that's cool. Keen. We, um, we, had him on the podcast and we've had uh who else did we a have? lot of just oh. uh oh sorry yeah comedians and but yeah we try to find like people from different walks of life just uh whatever kind of interests us we had kyle canane on we had uh uh mark valley yeah well we have a lot of people that have gone through been in a pyramid scheme or multi-level marketing company and then talk about their story um yeah we're gonna be in Arizona, April 16th and 17th. Yeah, I'll be in Vegas, uh, May 3rd through 6th at the uh, MGM, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Getting back out there. It's opening up, baby. Yeah. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, I'm Super Coach Staff and Tom. Tom Clark Comedy. Tom Clark Comedy. Yeah. Sweet. Perfect. Thank well, you. Thank you. So thanks much for, for doing thanks it. for being on the cavalry. <laughs> cavalry. We're raising awareness of how to say the word yes. one <laughs> at this point, two guests at a time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, please leave, leave a, a five star review, and we will eventually, eventually, back you up on whatever your issue is. Yeah. I think I think I checked this time and there wasn't. I did check this one. time. Okay, we cool. don't have any. Okay, great. Uh, anyway, we'd like to close out our show by reminding the <laughs> listeners that nobody is leaving reviews. Yeah, so do it. Uh, all right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time on The Cavalry. Yeah.